Welcome to this edition of Clinical Clips, an accredited continuing education activity. This brief expert video will spotlight the daily hot topics from the conference. Welcome to the International AIDS Society Conference 2023 here in Brisbane, Australia. Uh, even though it's winter, in the middle of winter, uh, it's a pleasant 22 degrees. Uh, my name is Julian Gold. I'm a senior staff specialist at the Albion Centre in Sydney and a professor of medicine at the University of Sydney. Uh, the first presentation is a study by Ropestock and colleagues, which is 48-week double-blind placebo-controlled uh, clinical trial of naive HIV patients comparing Duravarine is Latrovir with big FTC TAF. And this is the first time that this has been presented and it's using 0 0.75 milligrams of the Slatrovir, which is more than the current standard treatment of 0.25 milligrams. Interestingly, there were about 25% uh, females in the trial. Uh, the patients were an average age of about 32, and they were from very diverse uh, cultural and ethnic backgrounds. For the results, at the end of 48 weeks, about 88.9% in the Duravarine, the Slatrovir group, and 88.3% in the FTC TAF group uh, had an undetectable viral load. About 10% of people were lost to follow up. Only one patient showed resistance, and that was to the Duravarine Latrovir uh, arm, and it was determined that the main reason of, for development of resistance was that the patient was non-adherent to treatment. So in summary, uh, uh, for this first naive trial comparing these two treatments, there was really uh, no difference in any of the important factors and uh, it was uh, uh, about equal. Uh, the second study being presented is the uh, renal safety of uh, the Illuminate A and B which again is the switch between Duravarine, the Slatrovir, and standard of therapy. And the second one was a switch between Duravarine, the Slatrovir, and Big F TAF. So what we saw in this trial was that, or this drilling down into the study, was basically that there was essentially no difference in either study, irrespective of the arms, in relation to the mean change in serum creatinine, serum cystatin C, or urine albumin creatinine ratio. So there was quite a good comparison between both of those studies. At the entry to the study, nearly all of the patients had good renal function. So it was quite an appropriate comparison to make between those two groups. So essentially what we saw is that the main difference in it was that there were improvements in EGFR creatinine as compared to EGFR cystatin when we switched from basic treatment or the standard of care treatment in the P017 trial or the BF-TAF study to Duravarine the Slatrovir. And this is consistent with, as I said, removing the inhibitory effect of these antiretrovirals on creatinine secretion. And we also found that, or they found that switching from BF-TAF to Duravarine the Slatrovir didn't affect EGFR, cystatin, or any of the other parameters. So essentially, uh, the conclusion is that Duravarine and Slatrovir uh, at these doses have a favourable uh, safety, renal safety profile. Now, the, the next uh, study that I'll be presenting is very important because We've asked now for a number of years 
to look objectively at the trend towards starting patients on rapid antiretroviral therapy as soon as they've been diagnosed. So this trial looked at the cost and cost effectiveness of rapid starting antiretroviral therapy. And essentially, the uh, results were, were very interesting. What they showed is that there was quite a diversity of, of outcomes at the sites. Nearly all of the sites increased rapid initiation of therapy during uh, the period of the study, but the costs per site varied quite tremendously really from about $88 per patient up to about $13,000 or so per patient. So many of those uh, costs really depended on how, how the site had prepared itself, how many patients they were actually seeing, and uh, whether they could adjust to initiating therapy quite quickly. And when we looked at the overall quality saved by site by year, while they varied quite a bit. Overall, all of the sites over time proved that rapid initiation of antiretroviral therapy is both cost saving and also cost effective and definitely worthwhile considering for the social and economic and personal uh, advantages in starting rapid therapy as soon as diagnosis is made. Now, our, our last uh, presentation was probably the most important of uh, perhaps even of this conference in that it really was a presentation which has got a great chance of actually changing day-to-day -day management of HIV. And this uh, is called the Reprieve Study. And essentially it's based on the premise and the observation is that patients with HIV have between a 50 and 100% greater risk of developing cardiovascular disease than age match controls without HIV. So this trial was set up in 2015, and it basically was a, is a double-blind placebo-controlled trial to look at major adverse cardiovascular events, or MACE, in a large population of patients who wouldn't normally meet the criteria for needing to go on a statin. So what was done was that the investigators selected a statin called the statin, which is one of the statins that can be used in patients with HIV and doesn't interact with any of the antiretroviral drugs and is known to have an antioxidant effect. Very importantly, about 30% uh, of patients were women and about 70% were men. And they came from a very diverse background, um, cultural, socioeconomic, uh, and, and ethnic background. Now, the best thing about this trial, or the, the what was announced today, was that after five years, the DSMB actually stopped the trial, and they stopped the trial because it showed that those on patavastatin had a 35% reduced risk of having MACE. That's a, a major cardiovascular event and a 21% less risk of dying. So this is really a very important trial because Number one, more than 80% of patients in both groups remained uh, available to follow up. Adherence was very good to excellent and uh, adverse reactions uh, to this and discontinuations were extremely low. And really uh, this shows that in 
a group of HIV patients by treating them with a statin, uh, we have been able to reduce their risk of cardiovascular events by a significant amount, by 35%. Uh, this paper was also published this morning in the New England Journal, and the consensus of the very large audience was that this study has really the potential of changing clinical practice. Thank you very much for joining us for episode one, and please refer to the landing page for the slides, and please be sure to come back tomorrow night for episode two of these clinical clips from uh, IAS 2023. Thank you. We hope you found this activity useful and educational. To receive continuing education credit and to download your printable certificate, please return to the activity webpage and click on the Claim Credit button associated with today's clinical clip.